to this, it's hard to figure out what Prigozhin's angle is because one thing I heard from Max Blumenthal and from some other people and kind of the tank he left is that Prigozhin has kind of been bellyaching about a variety of things during the war, saying that the the uh, Ministry of Defense in Russia and some of the other commanders are being stupid. They're not giving him the ammo he needs. There's they're doing too much regrouping. No regrouping, <laughs> as that one meme says. I guess I'll have to post that so people know what we're talking about. And then the, the Max Blumenthal types have been saying he's been doing this kind of belly aching and this whining so that it can egg on Ukraine to do some kind of counteroffensive or to start pushing more more of their troops and more of their weapons into this conflict and away from a peace deal. It's like a psyop is what they're contending, is that okay. he's trying to make Russia look weaker than they actually are. So Ukraine will press even harder. And in a way that's worked because assuming Zelensky believes what he says, which you know it's not totally clear whether he does, the, overall the counteroffensive has not really been working out. It, it actually hasn't. If you get past some of the dumb headlines about they took back seven or eight villages, which villages you know, in a Associated Press article that's like, yeah, they weren't of any strategic significance. So, and then um, they took that one gas station down the street. We took back a village. No, exactly. Or as um, I'm trying to find the uh, article where uh, there's a BBC News interview where Zelensky said the headline is Zelensky admits slow progress, but says offensive is not a movie. You know, <laughs> but it, it, it's a cope. You've got Ukraine. What is your cope? An explanation for why this is happening under Biden, but not Trump. I really do want to hear it because it, it has to be the dumbest argument ever because none of this stuff happened under Trump. None, none of this. They tried to rumor. Oh, Putin's going to. He didn't invade Ukraine. Didn't happen. It was only under Biden. No, and as, as Trump said, I'm, I'm going to get this done within 24 hours, which is a bold claim. But he seems like someone who could reasonably disarm the situation. He'd probably stop with all the aid he's sending to Zelensky and he he wouldn't say stuff like Biden does, like, for God's sakes, this oh, man cannot remain in power. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. No, I, I think Trump, he would be like, OK, we're done with the aid. Ukraine, let's figure out a way yeah, to let's broker it. it let's, let's broker a deal. Obviously, yeah, your borders got invaded. That's not a good thing. But it's like at this point, you're not retaking it. You're not marching on Moscow like we need to find a resolution to this. There's this dumb Reuters article I read about like. The Ukraine negotiating, saying that our peace plan is the only peace plan we're, we want to uh, take action on, yeah, and it's exactly. give away all the territory you just took, Russia, and yeah. then we'll call a ceasefire. It, it, it's like it's not really your call at this point. Like we're no. funding your war effort at this point. Um, well, I mean, of course you're gonna you're gonna start the negotiations with the top thing and and work your way down. So I'm not saying they they don't have a right to like make a ridiculous claim to begin with. The uh, you're a negotiator; you can claim what you want, but that. That's not realistic in any sort of expectation. I mean, real, with a Trump, let's say Trump takes office in 2025 and this is still going on. I mean, realistically, Oof. Russia gets the Donbass region probably mm -hmm. and then there's some other deal. And if you want to say, hey, after after ceding those um, territories to Russia, maybe you admit Ukraine into NATO, that would definitely facilitate um, keeping any further conflicts from occurring because it would piss off Russia because there'd be more NATO encroachment going on. But the whole point is the a part of the deal they would get some of the territory that they offer. Sure, yeah, that could be a um, and, and probably a table. lot of the economic sanctions lifted. Mm, it's called too. diplomacy. I know, like <laughs> yeah. the Biden administration doesn't understand how this works. Well, and and it's like and it's not like well, that's how World War Two started. It's well, like yeah, no, I was about to say there's so, something called nuance. So yeah, it, I remember hearing this this argument where it's it's so hilarious to watch all these. Ukraine flag wearing nutbags on the the spit lib left suddenly using this rhetoric that was used by the right on the war on terror saying you know you're a traitor you're not patriotic enough for supporting this war suddenly there are those kinds of people yeah and and they have this World War II mythology where Putin is Hitler Zelensky is Churchill and it's like World War II and they had this this we don't want to be Chamberlain and appeasing Putin and there's this thin end of the wedge idea behind this whole process but it's like that's almost never how anything works. Well, I think the easiest way to combat all those claims that I used, even people on the right early during the whole Ukrainian yeah. conflict last winter, um, when they're talking about, oh, this is how World War II started, things like that. I was like, well, China occupied Hong Kong. Did you care? And, and a lot of them, oh, mm -hmm. I didn't even know that happened. And it's like, <laughs> yeah, like China occupied Hong Kong. Should we had troops on the ground? 
oh well no uh and it's, no, and it's like okay care about so, ukraine because they were told they care about so you ukraine. can't tell me yeah exactly so you can't tell me oh we we, we need boots on the ground in ukraine or else world war ii is going to repeat itself but let china basically occupy hong kong yeah, that it's is like strange. what is what is your defense for that and basically they didn't know about it and it's like right exactly their whole point is your anger is all just stirred it's just controlled and stirred up it's just they're telling you to care about the conflict conservative commentators at that time were telling you that you know this will lead to you know first uh kiev next berlin you know mm -hmm. sort of rhetoric and it's yeah, like they're gonna, they're gonna invade poland except ukraine is the only one that fired any missiles it's like oh well, what, what about when china took hong kong oh i didn't know about that and it's like oh my god yeah exactly and so back to what you're saying about the negotiating thing where it's you're not gonna be a good compromise as calvin and hobbes would say a good compromise leaves everyone mad well the spirit of that i think you can interpret is you have to give things up in a negotiation you're not going to be a hundred percent satisfied with what you want. So yeah. if Zelensky and whatever oligarchs or neo Nazis are controlling him, it's going to be like, yeah, we might have to give up a good deal of East Ukraine, but then the war will stop. And as Trump would say, people will stop dying. Yeah, They're exactly. Dying. Does that not matter to these leftist people? You said that we've got one here where several Ukrainian brigade brigades are missing in action. Yes, that was an interesting one because, as I said before, this counteroffensive hasn't been getting much in the way of good results there were headlines from two weeks ago saying that they're getting stiff resistance from the russian defenses which is if it's coming from the msm which is just been an arm of the ukrainian military effort i mean there's basically just non-stop everything is always a trash fire going on in russia russia is always doing terrible they're always blowing up their own stuff while ukraine is taking villages and it's, it's <laughs> it's hilarious to read on a day-to-day -day basis, but then they finally say something truthful where it's like, yeah, it's not really going that well. Yeah, well, it, not to pull from uh, our favorite neocon, but Shapiro does make an interesting point when he says, what exactly is the end goal of this conflict for mm. anyone? Like, or especially if you're if you're just the most pro-Ukraine person, like let's say you, you think Russia is completely evil um, and Ukraine is like the greatest country ever, and you, you know, you still fly your Ukrainian flag on social media. What is the end goal for you? Because it's clear Ukraine's not going to be able to take back their. Oh no, but point. they will. They have to. We just got to send them more weapons. Yeah, I mean, unless we get ridiculously, I mean, unless we start sending our own troops and gear. I mean, no. And so I think coming back to the main point, like, in order to end it, something, some sort of negotiation will have to occur. Short of like full NATO full scale invasion we're taking moscow monor for three style mm -hmm. <laughs> like that's not that's that's such a pipe dream guys i know you guys got the bloodlust you just want to see i don't know putin in some sort of yeah. trial i, I don't know well, what they said he, he uh let's see biden called him a war criminal then the international criminal court issued an arrest warrant they're going to get putin for the the kidnapping of ukrainian children or they something. want him in like some sort of a war crimes tribunal and then yeah. like he names trump it's like oh trump helped me and like i did they have some sort of weird weird vision for what's going to happen but it's like it, there's nothing irrationally at all with this this conflict and so i saw you had other articles where the counteroffensives from ukraine are not meeting the, no, the no they're, they're not um this is cnn or Zelensky admits slow progress yep and the bbc interview and then reuters reporting slower than desired the ukrainian offensive and it was so funny if you go back about three weeks to when people kept like prepping for saying, all right, the counteroffensive, the spring counteroffensive, which is now kind of the summer counteroffensive, but the counteroffensive is going to be underway and that's when they're going to get things done. And it, I, I guess I could do it whenever I have the time, just look at all those hype articles. Because so, they needed a new rush of good news after Bakhmut went down in May. Because first people were saying, you know, bad news in Bakhmut, Russia's uh, making more and more gains. It'll be a Pyrrhic victory for Russia though, which is kind of a cope for Russia won that bit of territory. So like, how can we keep the Ukraine lifeblood alive? How can we keep all, all our dumb New York Times readers who wave the Ukraine flag and have it on their Twitter bio, how can we still convince them that this war is still somewhat winnable? It's like, do you not even care about the people in the region? Like, do you just want the region to remain in perpetual war like the Middle East? Like, what is it? What has that done Again, for those it's people? It's funny watching all these people on the left who were railing about how awful Bush was for the war on terror and the endless wars going yeah. on and, and, and imperialism and whatnot, but then are just willing to fight to the last man over this Russia thing. Yeah. It's like, I mean, that region's just getting completely destroyed. 
you know, it's much of Ukraine's homes. population is just gone. Like they've either left or they're dead. Yeah. And it's like, do you maybe want that to stop? And it's like, it's not like Russia is, if it was, you know, like I said, China invading Taiwan is a different story because China is just guilty of so many <laughs> war crimes and treatment of their people and things like that. And Russia is not good either, but it's like, you're telling me Ukraine is like so much better <laughs> in treatment of their citizens than Ukraine. It's like, it's not like, Occupation under Russia is going to be the absolute. Well, end of and the a world couple of things. It's essentially the Russian speaking and culturally Russian. Yeah, so I mean, to begin that, with, so two points to make there. Like one, what this frustratingly was absent from the context of the invasion. Like, because back when I was more of a Ukraine supporter, like many people hopped on the current thing bandwagon. Like, oh my gosh, you know, they're they're invading Ukraine because Putin is Hitler and he wants more territory. But when there's this context over eight years where people in East Ukraine who were in large part Russian speaking, or had a lot of that going on and didn't want to go along with the coup that happened, the, the Soros backed coup. Um, they were shelled and a lot of people died in the U- inner Ukraine civil war conflict there. So it, it at least changes the complexion. It's like, okay, Russia's not just invading because they're greedy for territory, or at least not explicitly. It's a, co- a complicated conflict. It, it's complicated. That's why DeSantis, even though he got in a ton of trouble for it, said this is a territorial dispute. And it kind of is. I mean, it kind of does boil down to that. And um, in a good deal you do for this thing, you go, okay, Russia is going to get this amount of territory. And you tell the Ukrainian citizens, okay, you can stay or you can come relocate in Ukraine. Mm. Like it's your choice and see what happens. There'll be a bunch of space for you in Ukraine because a bunch of the Ukrainian migrants or, or war refugees are just staying where they are now yeah. in Europe and the United States. You, you give, I think you give those people the choice. And so if they think Russia is so bad, fine. They, they can go resettle in the parts of Ukraine. But if there's Russian-speaking people who want to be under Russia, they can stay there. I, I don't see why that's such a horrible thing to end the bloodshed and the temperature rising and pushing Russia into the hands of China and yes. on and on it goes. Yes, yeah. like, I don't see why that's a bad trade. I, I just, I don't know. It makes sense to me. 